How many times have you set a New Year's resolution to read more books only to end up abandoning that goal within the first three months of the year? A lot of people always say that they want to read more books, but very few people actually follow up on that and do something about it. One of the main reasons why so many people struggle to read more books these days is that modern society is just overloading us with content. In the age of media streaming and on-demand content, we become so oversaturated with the kind of content that we consume. It's partly why you spend more of your time browsing through Netflix's library instead of actually just watching something on Netflix. You end up becoming so paralyzed by the vastness of options at your disposal that you end up not knowing what to watch, read, or listen to. However, I firmly believe that reading is still one of the best forms of content consumption. And I promise by the end of this video, you will get a better idea of how you can trick yourself into actually reading more books. But before we get to that, I want to talk about why reading is important to begin with. First, reading gives you a lot of intellectual and emotional knowledge. Sure, a lot of us already know that we can gain a lot of knowledge about facts figures, and events through reading. But you also gain emotional knowledge through reading as well. Reading teaches you empathy by giving you a glimpse into the mind of other people or characters, whether fictional or not. Next, reading does a good job at improving your literacy and your vocabulary. This can particularly come in handy if you're a professional writer like me. I always tell beginner writers that the best way to get better at writing is to read more. Reading not only teaches you the nuance of language, but it also helps you unlock the secrets of effective communication. Reading trains you to be able to communicate your thoughts more clearly and more succinctly. So you end up getting better at conversing and expressing yourself to the people around you. I never find it difficult to express myself like this on camera or to other people in the middle of a conversation because I have a solid background in reading. Lastly, reading is training for your mind. We're taught to engage in regular physical exercise like running, swimming, biking, or weightlifting because it's good for your body. The same principles apply to reading as well. When you read, you are stimulating your brain and you're strengthening that organ. This will help maintain your cognitive function as you get older, and studies have even shown that constant reading can help prevent the development of Alzheimer's. Now with that out of the way, let's get to talking about the concrete tips that you can use to read more books. The first thing that you need to do is to set your reading intentions. One big mistake that people make whenever they start reading is that they don't do it intentionally. And what I mean by that is that they merely read for the sake of reading. At the start, it's very important for you to set your goals for yourself with regards to your reading. For example, you may want to read because you have a goal of becoming a better writer. Or maybe you want to read more books about philosophy because you want to orient yourself more about that particular topic. Or maybe you're just looking for more productive ways to procrastinate and spend your time. Whatever the case, set an intention and own up to it. Next, have a dedicated reading spot. Personally, I've gotten to a point wherein I can read anywhere, anytime I want. But it always helps to have a dedicated reading spot. It can be your favorite couch in the living room or even your favorite cafe. By having a dedicated reading spot, you are training your mind to immediately initiate reading mode whenever you enter that spot. The next piece of advice that I can give you is to bring a book with you wherever you go. I'm planning on doing a what's in my bag or an everyday carry video soon for this channel. Comment down below if you're interested in seeing that. But spoiler alert, one of the things that I always have in my bag is a book. And the reason I always bring a book around is because I never know when an opportunity will arise for me to be able to read. Maybe you're waiting at the doctor's office for an appointment. You could use that extra time to read and be more productive. I'm actually thinking about getting a Kindle because it would be a lot easier to bring around. People who have a Kindle out there, let me know what your experience is like. I'm genuinely curious. But yeah, it always helps whenever you're bringing your book around. And for my next hack, listen to audiobooks. As I've talked about on my channel before, I like to go running. But whenever I run, most of the time, I'm either listening to a podcast or I'm listening to an audiobook. That way, I'm killing two birds with one stone by strengthening my body and my mind at the same time. Audiobooks are also great if you drive every day and if you find yourself stuck in traffic a lot. You'd be surprised at how many books you could get through if you just use your driving time to listen to audiobooks. Now for my next tip, it might not necessarily be applicable to everyone, but it really works for me. And I think it's 
important that you write your reviews or reflections on a book after you read it. Side note, it was this habit that actually led to me creating my podcast, Fiction Friends. It's a book review podcast. Follow us, subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, ultimately, writing reviews for the books that I read made me internalize what I was reading better. They gave me a chance to have a better appreciation of what I was actually reading. For my next tip, embrace the DNF or do not finish. Now, this may sound like sacrilege coming from a guy who preaches books, but life is too short to read books that you're not happy with. My general rule is that if you're halfway through a book and you feel like you're not compelled to finish it, abandon it. Of course, you can always continue reading if you want. I'm just saying that you shouldn't pressure yourself to actually finish that book. Sometimes it helps just to even put that book on pause and move on to another book in the meantime. This was what happened to me when I read Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson. I thoroughly love this book. However, the first time I read it, I just wasn't in the right headspace and I found it difficult to absorb the thoughts and the concepts that were being discussed in the book. But the second time around, I just couldn't put the book down anymore and it ended up becoming one of my favorite reads probably ever. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, make the time to read. Too often, the most common excuse that people will make about not being able to read as many books as they want is that they don't have the time to read. That's a lie. You always have the time. If you have the time to browse through social media for two hours every day, then you have the time to read a book. It's not that you don't have the time to read, it's just that you're choosing to prioritize other things in life more. So don't make it a habit of saying that you don't have the time to read. Instead, say that you will make the time to read. I personally like to read right after my morning runs every day, right before I get to work. And then I'll read a little bit more just before I go to bed. Those are my dedicated reading time slots. If you're just a beginner, then start out by dedicating just 30 minutes of uninterrupted reading every day. That can really go a long way in helping you get through your book list. Then once you gain a better proficiency at reading, you can ramp it up to one hour or maybe even two hours every day. And that, my friends, is how I managed to read 100 books in one year. And I'm pretty sure if you employ the same tips, you'll be able to do the same. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Also comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If you want me to do more book-related content, let me know. I love talking about books and I can spend hours every day of just talking about books. But yeah, that just about does it for this video. Thank you guys for watching all the way through. I'll see you guys around again soon.